In this video, we will explore more about pig farming or pork production processes. The general public often remains unaware of the steps involved in pig farming or the choices farmers face at each stage of that process in order to save and run efficient cost-effective pig farm business. Across the United States, there are more than 60,000 pork producers. Pigs have been playing a vital role in our food chain for hundreds of years, however, for managers of modern piggery farming enterprises, there comes a unique set of challenges. There are a wide variety of ways to raise pigs, from free-roaming hogs farms to intensive commercial pig industry units. Whatever method you choose, the aim should be to do it in a safe, humane, environmentally sustainable, and profitable way. They include a variety of farm sizes and types, and they raise pork to meet a wide variety of consumer demands. There are different approaches to raising pigs, including small-scale farms, large-scale farms, and those whose pig raising practices serve niche markets, such as consumers who want pork raised with outdoor access. All these forms of pig farm are in use today, the intensive farms are by far the most popular, due to their potential to raise a large amount of pigs in a very cost-efficient manner. In developed nations, commercial farms house thousands of pigs in climate-controlled buildings. Pigs are a popular form of livestock, with more than 1 billion pigs butchered each year worldwide, 100 million of them in the USA. The majority of pigs are used for human food, but also supply skin, fat, and other materials for use as clothing, ingredients for processed foods, cosmetics, and medical use. The intensive system is the best and recommended system of keeping pigs if the production goal is to generate income. Under this system, pigs are kept indoors or in pens and not allowed to move outside. The pens are constructed in such a way that the pigs can eat and drink in their pen. This is the type of management system practiced by commercial pig farms. If you want to start a pig farm, then you must choose this system to get the best from the animals. The climate and number of pigs to be kept determine how pig houses and pens are constructed. Before choosing where the pig houses will be constructed and what materials to use, the local conditions of the area must be considered. Know whether the area is waterlogged, noisy, exposed to wind, etc. If the area is damp, hot or humid, shade and breeze should be taken into consideration. The pig house in this kind of area should be open and airy. The walls of the pens should be low and allow free passage of air for good ventilation. In pig farming, nutrition is very vital. Pigs can consume everything that humans eat. Some farms incorporate separate buildings for different pig life stages. Others divide a single building into three stages to efficiently use the space as the pigs grows from weaner to grow to finisher. Some hog barns use a single area from weaning to finishing. Dividing the piglets by age group allows greater biosecurity and efficient use of space. They are omnivores, that is, they can feed on food from both vegetable and animal origins. For pigs to perform better, they need to be fed balanced diets and in adequate quantities. Piglets should be weaned between 4-8 weeks old of age. After they are weaned, they should be placed on a creep feed diet. Creep feed is very rich in protein and low in fiber. Whenever piglets are to be weaned, the sow or mother should be removed from the piglets and not the piglets from the sow. How long does it take to grow a pig? Unlike the beef industry, pork production is very fast-paced and always changing rapidly. On average, it takes around 6 months for a hog to reach market weight of 280 pounds. It all begins at the farrowing stage. Market-aged pigs are effectively hungry teenagers who will easily consume more than 2.5 kilograms of feed per day. This equates to daily feed costs of more 60p per day per pig. The entire profit is thus eliminated in a matter of days. Pig keepers and farmers know that limiting feed supply to hungry pigs, whose genetics are selected for rapid growth and efficient. When pigs arrive at a packing plant, they are unloaded in a calm manner and allowed to rest for a couple of hours prior to slaughter. This reduces the incidence of meat quality defects such as pale, soft, and exudative sea pork. During this time, animals have constant access to water. Pigs are moved in small groups using plastic paddles and sorting boards or curtains. Humane slaughter of pigs to enter the food chain at most large-scale slaughterhouses involves carbon dioxide stunning in small groups, followed by rapid and complete bleeding to ensure no animal regains consciousness. The process must be overseen by trained staff and veterinarians who are, themselves, in short supply. After stunning and bleeding occurs, the carcasses are put in a hot water bath to loosen hair follicles. After that, the carcasses are put into a machine that tumbles them to remove the hair. The remaining halves are washed to remove any remaining blood, bacteria or remains of bone, and then cooled down, in order to help with the process of cutting and deepening. After the carcasses are dehead in the tumbler, they move through a singer. This removes any remaining hair, and also gives additional food safety benefits of decreasing surface pathogens. The pig is then eviscerated, the head is usually removed, and the body is cut into two halves. 
The remaining halves are washed to remove any remaining blood, bacteria or remains of bone, and then cooled down, in order to help with the process of cutting and deepening. The pork carcasses are gutted and split in half, and sent through a rapid chill at very cold temperatures to improve meat quality. Carcasses are then chilled 24 to 48 hours before they are cut into smaller pieces like ham, loins, picnic, and Boston butt shoulders and bellies which are used to make bacon. After it is cut into pieces, the meat from the animal is then processed further into edible products. The buttocks are salted and pressed in order to eventually produce ham. The ribsage meat is salted and smoked in order to get bacon. Salt is rubbed thoroughly into each piece of meat and all surfaces are covered. Some formulas also include much black pepper. The bulk of the meat is cut and ground to produce various sausages, which are traditionally wrapped into the intestines of various sizes. The bulk of the fat is cut into small pieces. Some of it is fried to produce cracklings. Lard is made by rendering heating fragments of fat in a large iron pot over a fire until it is reduced to simmering grease which congeals when cooled. Lard is then stored in lard tins with tin covers. The typical tins in the US are 5 gallons. In some areas, mainly Eastern and Central Europe, but also Italy and United Kingdom, the fat is salted as is to produce salo, lardo or salt pork. The intestines are stripped by drawing them through a clenched fist. They are then washed, cut into short pieces, and fried to make chitlins. The various leftovers are put into various forms of head cheese jelly, etc. Most parts of the pig are used in this traditional process, even parts of the skin that would normally be thrown away are preserved to be cooked with beans. The smokehouse is essential for the preservation and long-term storage of hams, shoulders, bacon sides, and pork bellies. The meat is hung on racks and hooks in the smokehouse, and later smoked. Fragrant hardwood, such as hickory, beech, or cherry, is allowed to smolder slowly in a pit below the hanging meat. This gives added flavor and color to the meat, as well as serving to dry cure the pork. Meat cutter is responsible to prepare standard cuts of meat, including poultry and fish, to be sold in either a self-serve or specialty counter. In the UK the term used for retail meat cutter is still butcher. Retail meat cutters are found in a customer-oriented retail environment. This can be anything from a small family-owned meat shop to a large international supermarket chain. Meat cutters are a registered trade. Industrial meat cutters are found in production-oriented facilities and generally perform fewer tasks, but repeatedly. Retail meat cutters traditionally work indoors, in large refrigerated rooms, with temperatures ranging between 2 and negative 4 degrees Celsius. These environments are kept sanitary and are washed every day with powerful antibacterial cleaners. In larger retail outlets or plant facilities, working environments are generally equipped with power tools, such as band saws and circular slices. Meat cutters are also generally required to be in good physical shape. The duties of a meat cutter include standing for long periods of time, regularly lifting over 50 pounds, and working in cold conditions. Retail meat cutters also often have to deal with customers. Archaeological evidence suggests that pigs were domesticated from wild boar in the Near East in the Tigris Basin, being managed in the wild in a way similar to the way they are managed by some modern New Guineans. Remains of pigs have been dated to earlier than 11,400 years ago in Cyprus. Those animals must have been introduced from the mainland, which suggests domestication in the adjacent mainland by then. There was also a separate domestication in China which took place about 8,000 years ago. Pigs, both as live animals and the source of post-mortem tissues, are one of the most valuable animal models used in biomedical research today because of their biological, physiological, and anatomical similarities to human beings. For instance, human skin is very similar to the pig skin, therefore pig skin has been used in many preclinical studies. Porcine are used in finding treatments, cures for diseases, xenotransplantation, and for general education. They are also used in the development of medical instruments and devices, surgical techniques and instrumentation, and FDA-approved research. These animals contribute to the reduction methods for animal research, as they supply more information from fewer animals used, for a lower cost. Feces and waste are often spread to surrounding neighborhoods, polluting air and water with toxic waste particles. Waste from swine on these farms carry a host of pathogens and bacteria, as well as heavy metals. These toxins can leach down through the soil into groundwater, polluting local drinking water supplies. Pathogens can also become airborne, polluting the air and harming individuals when ingested. Contents from waste have been shown to cause detrimental health implications, as well as harmful algal blooms in surrounding bodies of water.